Saudi Arabians call this place the edge of the world. This spectacular landscape can be found on the outskirts of Riyadh, the capital city. People like to come here because it's a very quiet area. Very fresh and clean air far away from the city. Every time when I came here, I have the same feeling. The feeling of the God. By 2030, the edge of the world will be home to an entertainment complex two and a half times the size of Disney World. In the past, Saudi Arabia was not a holiday destination for international leisure tourists. The country is governed by strict Islamic laws. Women must cover up in public, gender segregation is common, and alcohol is forbidden. This can be at odds with what Western tourists look for when booking a holiday. But under the leadership of Mohammed bin Salman, the young crown prince, the country is changing. Tourism is at the heart of his plans to revolutionize the kingdom. He is plowing billions of dollars from the country's sovereign wealth fund into building a new tourist resort in the Red Sea. The project will cover 50 islands and 34,000 square kilometers, an area bigger than Belgium. There are separate plans for a futuristic eco-city and special economic zones stretching into Jordan and Egypt. The Prince's ambitious plan aims to attract 30 million visitors by 2030, double the current number. Rafat Shisha hopes more tourists will discover what the country has to offer. At his resort, guests can enjoy dinner and admire the form and grace of these purebred Arabian horses. This is pure Arabian horse. This horse is purely from Saudi Arabia and from this area. Rafat's usual guests are visiting dignitaries, business people and wealthy Saudi families. But soon, he could be welcoming foreign leisure tourists too. Because of the growth of the tourism business, I'm targeting all nationalities, all the people and all the family. The Crown Prince wants to diversify the economy which is heavily dependent on oil. Hydrocarbons account for over 80% of the kingdom's government revenues. One way to diversify is to entice more tourists. The vast majority of visitors at present are religious pilgrims to Mecca. 15 million people visit the holy city each year. The annual Hajj is the biggest gathering of Muslims in the world. If some of them can be tempted to extend their stay and visit other sites, that will boost tourism. Saudis going on holiday abroad spend around $25 billion annually. The prince wants them to spend more of that money at home. Such ideas are inspired by neighboring Dubai. It is now the third biggest tourism city in the world, attracting a global clientele and contributing 20% to the country's GDP. They have relaxed many social rules and permit alcohol in resorts. You cannot compare Dubai with Saudi Arabia. Dubai is a city with one road, with 10 shopping malls and 100 hotels, that's it. In Saudi Arabia, we have the heritage. Saudi Arabia is the heart of Arab and Islamic world. It's the hub connecting three continents. Visiting Saudi Arabia is a unique experience. Many Western tourists may be put off by such restrictions. It is unclear how far Mohammed bin Salman will be willing to relax social norms to attract Western tourists. Dress code is part of the social environment here in Saudi Arabia, in terms of men and females. So uh, Saudi Arabia try to uh, emphasize tourists and communicate with them what's proper for them to wear when they come and visit Saudi Arabia. The Crown Prince has a vision, but investing billions of dollars in luxury resorts is a gamble that might not pay off. Saudi Arabia will have to find a balance in appealing to religious tourists, Saudis and those from farther afield. Saudi Arabia is largely untouched by tourism and is a mystery for many travellers. That alone is a reason to visit. <laughs>